Hi everyone, in this session we will discuss about synchronization. Actually, the synchronization we have discussed in the earlier uh, topics. So, synchronization between different processes is required. Why? Because in order to avoid deadlock, in order to avoid deadlock or in order to prevent from race condition, we need synchronization between different processes. Right? For example, on the road, so we have synchronization between different vehicles. Otherwise, if there is no proper synchronization, then definitely the accident will occur. The accident will take place. For example, if you see in a class or in a college, so there is a synchronization. Yes, uh, a faculty who is dealing math subject, he will come between 9 to 10. Another faculty who is dealing science subject, he will come between 11 to 12. Another faculty who is dealing English subject, they will come and deal between 12 and 1 o'clock. Like that there is proper synchronization or otherwise if there is no synchronization, the class will occur. So here also the synchronization mechani mechanism in Linux operating system, so it consists of uh, different uh, things, okay, different mechanisms were there. So coming to the first one, so first one is atomic operations, next is semaphore, next is spin locks, next is sequence lock. Okay, we will see them each one by one. So coming to the first one, atomic operations on integers. So these are some examples. So for example, if you see atomic uh, underscore t, so it is nothing but defining atomic variable. So here it is nothing but defining the atomic variable. Coming to the second one, atomic set, amp set i comma 10, it is nothing but automatically assigning a value to the atomic variable. So here to the atomic variable, here we have defined the variable. So here i. So we are defining the variable. So here, so we are assigning this value to this variable. Okay, in the second one is we are assigning this value to this variable. Come to the third one, atomic increment of ampersand i. It is nothing but so automatically incrementing the value. We are automatically incrementing the value. Okay. Similarly, here automatically we are decrementing the value. Okay. And coming to here, what we are uh, doing is we are adding this value to this variable. So this variable is assigned with some value and uh, this value is added to that value. Okay, that is what uh, this operation means or this example means. Coming to this one is, last one is, it is nothing but atomic uh, read amps and i is nothing but we are uh, reading the value and we are returning the value of i. Okay, so these are some of the examples for atomic operations on integers. Okay, and coming to the next one, we have semaphore. We have semaphore. Okay, so when a process is trying to access, when a process is trying to access a semaphore, which is not available, okay, so semaphore puts that process on waiting queue. Semaphore puts that process on waiting queue. Okay, right. So what we are discussing when a process, when a process is trying to access semaphore which is not available, then at the time semaphore puts that process on wait queue. Okay, and puts <laughs> puts the task as sleep. Okay, it will keep that in the uh, waiting queue and puts the task as sleep it's in sleep mode. So the semaphore is also known as sleeping lock. So semaphore is also known as sleeping lock. Okay. And coming to the next, as soon as as soon as the semaphore gets available, so one of the tasks which is waiting in the queue. So we have discussed. So this is waiting queue. Waiting queue. So the elements will be entered from this end. It will be taken out from this end. So as soon as as soon as the semaphore is in available state, what we do is so whatever the what are the process entered first, that process will be sent for sent into the semaphore. That's what the other is telling. As soon as the semaphore gets available, so one of the tasks uh, from the wait queue is involved. Okay, basically semaphore is of uh, two types. One is basic semaphore and the other is read writer semaphore. Okay, so basic semaphore we have seen. The read writer semaphore is nothing but 
So multiple threads can read data at a time. So read and write semaphore is nothing but multiple threads can read the data simultaneously. Okay. So the data will be uh, the data will be cached or the data will be read. I mean one one thread may be performing read operation and some other process may be performing write operation. So here what we are supposed to do is in order to synchronize them, what we have to do is if a thread or a process is performing read operation, the process which are waiting, which are uh, which wants to perform write operation, they have to wait. Okay, they have to wait until all the readers uh, perform their read task. Okay, so read operation, write operation. So here, whatever the threads are, whatever the process or whatever the thread. If they want to perform read operation, so all the all the threads which are, which want to perform right, uh, which want all the uh, writers which want to perform write operation, they have to wait until the read operation is performed. Once the read operation is completed, then the writers can perform write operation one by one. Okay, not all at a time. Okay, so this is about the sum of four. Coming to the next one, it is a spin lock. So spin lock is nothing but it's a uh, busy wait uh, locking mechanism until the lock is available. So what is a spin lock? So it's a busy wait locking mechanism uh, until the lock is available. So spin locks, uh, they loop or they spin or they wait to acquire a lock. So spin lock is nothing but they will be waiting uh, to acquire a lock. So if the lock is not available, if the lock is not available, the thread uh, spins or loops checking the availability of lock. Okay. So the thread of the process will keep on spinning unless until it gets lock. Okay. If it don't get lock, it will keep on sp uh, spinning. Okay. So, if a process has acquired a lock, okay, let us suppose if process 1 has acquired a lock, process 2 trying to acquire the lock, okay, let us suppose now process P1, it got the lock, process P2 is trying to acquire the lock, so now process P2 will keep on spinning or rotating, okay, and keeps the process busy until it acquires a lock. Okay, here also the spin locks are of uh, two types. One is a basic spin lock and the other is a reader writer uh, spin lock. Okay, <laughs> now we have discussed the basic spin lock and reader writer spin lock is nothing but so this lock can have multiple readers at a time but only one writer. Okay, so uh, what we are doing is uh, therefore uh, what we are doing is no reader will be allowed unless until the write operation is completed okay so here here also we have two types of uh, spin locks they are nothing but basic spin lock and the other is reader writer spin lock basic spin lock and reader writer reader writer spin lock so basic spin lock we have discussed okay reader writer spin lock is nothing but so here we will have multiple multiple readers but only one writer so what we do is we will stop all the readers we will not allow any reader to perform read operation so only the writer will perform the write operation once this uh, write operation is over then we will allow all the readers to perform the read operation okay so that is something about the spin locks. Okay. Last but not least, the last one is a sequence lock. So it maintains a counter for sequence. So it maintains a counter for calculating the sequence. Okay, you know the counter. The counter is used for counting the number of uh, repetitions or the number of clock cycles like that. So, where the uh, stored data is written but is obtained and incremented by one. So, when the shared data, when the shared data is written, 
Okay, log is obtained and incremented by 1. So here we are discussing about sequence log. So the sequence log it maintains a counter for sequence. Okay, when the shared data is returned, when the shared data is returned, log is obtained and, and incremented by 1. Okay. While operation makes the sequence counter value to odd. Okay, when the value, when the operation makes the sequence counter uh, value as odd and it releases <laughs> and uh, releasing it makes even. Okay, so uh, while operation, when, when this uh, lock is in operation, when it is performing any operation, the value will be odd value. Okay, when it releases, when this operation is released, when this operation is released, now it will be turned to even. Okay, that's what the author is uh, exactly trying to say. Okay, so when the operation makes the sequence counter value to odd, okay, and uh, it releases, when it releases, so it makes a uh, even number. Okay, in case of reading, the sequence counter is read before and after. <coughs> So, in case of uh, reading, sequence counter is uh, read before and after reading the data. If the values are the same, which indicates that a write did not begin at the middle of the read. Okay. So, in addition to that, if values are even, a, uh, a write operation, if values are even, a write operation is not going to perform. Okay. So sequence log uh, sequence log gives the high priority to uh, writers compared to readers. Finally, what the author is telling is the sequence log it gives high priority for writers. Okay, no priority to readers. Okay, so with this we will end up uh, our session. Okay, thank you.